Hey guys, welcome back to Check It Out. In today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you why I bought the Tundra over the Ford F-150. Don't forget the Ford F-150, the most popular truck on the road and the most popular vehicle, trucks and cars on the road is the F-150. I'll explain to you why it was really not a tough decision except for one major thing, the bed of the truck almost pushed me over to Ford, but I've been a Toyota person for most of my life. I did have one Honda, but I'll tell you what, this Tundra I am so happy with, and I'll explain to you in a little bit. We've had a Sequoia, which is very similar to the Tundra. It's been an absolute workhorse. So I'll dive into this in a little bit. So maybe you are as well trying to figure out if you're gonna go Tundra or F-150, and I'll give you some evidence on why I went with this Tundra. So first of all, this is a 2021 Tundra. Absolutely awesome vehicle. I've had it three months now. I'm in love with it. This is the platinum level, so you get a little bit nicer interior, and it's got a few bells and whistles, which I'm, I'm really enjoying. So with the Toyotas, well, they do have several tiers, right? We've got the um, SR, SR5, and then working up towards like the Limited, this right here is the Platinum. We've got the uh, 1794, if I'm remembering that one right, and then of course the TRD Pro. And uh, so there's definitely some, and there are some packages with the Toyotas, but I felt like the packages really made a lot more sense. So as you moved up each level, like the five things that you would get sort of all coincided with each other and it just kind of made some sense. But this right here was the big factor for me. So you're looking at a five and a half foot bed back there and that five and a half foot bed is what made me nervous. I've had Tacomas in the past that had a, I believe a six or six and a half foot bed and I always thought that that was the perfect size. I've also driven um, F-150s and F-250s as work trucks, right? Not personal ones that I bought. But, um, but the bed of the trucks was always a little bit bigger. A five and a half foot bed made me nervous. And I kept waiting and waiting and waiting to see if the Tundra would be updated and give us a little bit more choices on those bed sizes. Now this is the crew cab, of course, right? So on the crew cab, you don't have a choice. Five and a half foot bed, that's it, and that's all. So I'm happy to report that after bringing this home and throwing the surfboards in it and the other things that are sort of bigger, it works absolutely perfect. Uh, it's basically gone from my number one concern to absolutely no concern whatsoever. But um, I have to say the F-150, they do have a shorter bed, the five and a half, and they do have a six and a half foot bed offered on both, uh, both beds on the crew cab is what I'm gonna call it. I think if I remember correctly, they called it a slightly different term, but the four real doors, right? So that very large cab area, and then you could also get the six and a half foot bed on that truck if that's the direction you wanted to go. For me, I would have loved to get that. If to Toyota offered that, that's what I would have gone with. So diving a little bit deeper, that was the only thing that the F-150 had that I really, really wanted. And I test drove them and I checked them out and I really shopped them around and was thinking that I might go that direction. I felt like Ford was a little bit confusing when I was shopping for them. And every time I would just sort of be, it was like a magnetic pull back to Toyota. And again, I've owned a lot of Toyotas. We have a Sequoia 2013 with 104,000 miles on it. Workhorse has the same engine and transmission as this truck right here. Now that's the V8 5.7 liter and that six uh, speed transmission. And while there are some negative sides to that gas mileage, there are some huge positives. With that engine and that transmission, when we talk about bulletproof, that's what we're talking about. That's why we buy Toyotas, of course. With the F-150s, Ford really seemed to be pushing the EcoBoost engine, and that's just not a choice I was ready to make. I wasn't sure about the reliability, and while I could get a V8, I believe in some of them, it seemed like most of the F-150s were outfitted with that EcoBoost. That reliability was a big factor for me, and I was concerned that and we're not gonna get the trucks that last 10, 15, 20 years. My last Tacoma that I just sold was 24 years old with 210 or 211,000 miles on it or so. So also with the Ford, you could still get the 5.0 V8. Now, it, there wasn't many of them. Like when I went to the dealership, they had a whole bunch of F-150s, but they really pushed the EcoBoost. But you could still get that option in, I think it was the 2020 vehicles that I was looking at. But what you did not have a choice in is all of those FN50s came with that 10-speed transmission. That 10-speed transmission is not tested and proven, in my opinion. It's only been around for a couple years, and I think that you have to give a transmission like that some time to see, is it gonna re be reliable or is it not? When you go with that Toyota transmission and the engine that they have in that 2021 or earlier, 
then you know that is a tried and true setup. So I ended up making a pros and cons list for each one of these trucks. And I have to say on the F-150, there was one big standout pro that I could not get on the Toyota though. If I was still in the construction world, I think that's the truck I would wanna get. Now that's really only because if I was in the construction world with three kids, I'd wanna have the crew cab set up and then I'd also want that six and a half foot bed. Now as a dad who's moving around three kids who you know go on family trips, throwing mountain bikes in the back and doing that kind of thing, I really kind of rethought it. If I remember right, that truck that I just described, that F-150 with the six and a half foot bed, of course the downside of that is now it's getting to be a very long vehicle. I was surprised that the Sequoia we have, and I was comparing it to this Tundra that I purchased, and the Tundra is significantly more, like I'm gonna say it looks like about a foot longer than the Sequoia, and I thought the Sequoia was already a beast. So this Tundra is big, and once you get any bigger than this, you no longer kind of fit in that normal parking spot if you're trying to go to the supermarket. And I know that's kind of a joke or whatever, you're going to the supermarket in your fancy truck, well, that's the honest truth. I'm a dad, I got three kids, and I'm no longer in the construction field. So a lot of times, yeah, I'm running errands in the truck, going to Home Depot, picking up a whatever, you know, doing those kinds of things. And I felt like this truck was the perfect fit for that. This Tundra was the perfect fit for the dad on the go, the three kids going in, throwing a surfboard, throwing a mountain bike, do those kinds of things. Very nice size vehicle. And that F-150, when you put on the six and a half foot bed in the full crew max, then all of a sudden we get to the sort of that next size truck that's very big and challenging to start getting in and out of normal parking spots and things like that. And for the pros on the Tundra, the one that was kind of the standout is that reliability. Again, I kept going back to the fact that I know this V8, this 5.7 V8 and that six speed transmission, I know that it's tried and true. I know that those are gonna hold up for the long haul as long as I change the oil and be smart with the transmission and that kind of stuff. I mean, they will quote unquote last forever. And that was a really big deciding factor for me is that I keep putting my heart in Toyota and I keep having that, that positive experience with Toyota and I was ready for another positive experience. I don't wanna have to bring back this truck to the dealership once a month because there's some little problem going on. And I know with Toyota, I'm not gonna have that. And I don't know that for sure with Ford. All right, friends, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope in some way it's gonna help you and possibly make a choice or at least be a more informed consumer. Go get the right truck for you. And if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna see some more on this Tundra, this is a series that I have about 10 different videos on this truck and I'm gonna make more and more videos on it. So if you subscribe to the channel, look at the playlist called Tundra Build and you can see what the rest of those videos are all about. If this video helped you out, I'd love to get a like. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.